everyone. My name is Brad Shimon. I'm an analyst with Omdia, and it's my pleasure to uh, introduce to you uh, two very special guests uh, that have uh, joined me to talk about computer vision. We have Wayne Arvidson, who's the Global Director uh, for Market Development and Strategy at Dell Technologies. Welcome, Wayne. Thanks, Brad. Good to see you. Good to see you. And we also have uh, with us Joe Mayberry, who's the General Manager for Smart Cities at Intel. Uh, thank you, Joe, for coming on our chat today. My pleasure, Brad. Thanks for having me. So everyone in the audience, uh, as you hopefully know, because you're here, uh, we are here to talk about computer vision. And uh, we are very fortunate, as I mentioned, to have two guests that have extensive knowledge in helping companies to create um, computer vision solutions that are state of the art, cutting edge and very scalable, uh, and and I know we'll probably dip into a bit of that today. Just given, for example, uh, you know Joe's history with with smart cities. But um, to begin, what I'd like to do is is just set set the tone, if you will, by um, emphasizing the importance of computer vision. Uh, I think, as as we would all agree, that uh, uh, perhaps today is a, a much needed respite from generative AI. Uh, for our, our topic of conversation, uh, although I, I guarantee that we'll loop back around to that <laughs> during during the call because it is it is a very important aspect uh, of AI in general. But we're here today to talk about how valuable computer vision itself is to the broader community of AI, which includes generative AI. And this mm -hmm. is an area that uh, you know I, I work for uh, a, a firm that that basically tries to figure out how big markets are. And so uh, Omdia has done that. And we see that you know, right now, enterprises are spending about $2.5 billion a year just on, very specifically on, computer vision technologies. And we expect that, that that's going to actually uh, explode by over 150% by the time we get to 2027, where we think this is going to be uh, over $6.2 billion uh, just in revenue spent on computer vision technology. So this is a very active area of investment. And as you'll see, as we as we talk to Wayne and Joe today, um, that the reason for that is the applicability of computer vision across all use cases, all vertical markets is fairly staggering. Uh, so I, ho I hope that that comes across in our conversation with you all today. Uh, but let's not begin by boiling the ocean. Let's instead begin by just just trying to, um, at a very simple level, uh, uh, begin with a question, a basic question of, um, you know, why is computer vision so important and so central to these broader AI outcomes I'm talking about? Wayne, can I throw that to you? Would you help us with that? Absolutely, Brent. So, you know, computer vision is it's a subset of artificial intelligence that enables computers and systems to derive uh, meaningful information from uh, digital images, from videos, other visual inputs like, you know, LIDAR sensors, for example, is a, is a hot topic right now. So it's really about allowing computers to, to see, to observe and understand the world around them in to your point on generative AI, ultimately make recommendations based on that visual information, right? If you if you think about it, if a if a picture is worth a thousand words, then a minute of video at sixty frames a second is is worth three point six million. <laughs> well, well put, well put. Um, and and I think that um, it's interesting to note as well that. Um, generative AI's influence in this is, is kind of twofold, as you mentioned, uh, and also in facilitating the creation of computer vision outcomes. So we all know uh, in working in this area how difficult, for example, it is to get good labeled annotated data sometimes. And I think that the market is going to start to see some really great opportunities popping up with, you know, with that as sort of a, a, a facilitator. And, and one thing to add there, Brad, just to follow up on that, when you think about the physical world and trying to create a, a, a digital twin of that physical world, the camera is the number one sensor to do that. And computer vision is technology that turns that physical world into a digital world that can then be analyzed and improved upon and operationalized. So it's, it's spot on what you said. 
Yeah, I love that. And we saw it, did we not, um, with Meta's uh, recent um, announcements uh, regarding you know, their use of computer vision and generative AI. I thought uh, that, w- that was a, a terrific you know, way to explain in, in the metaverse, admittedly, where I, I, I'm not sure <laughs> if you guys have gone visiting there, but uh, I have not. Um, but uh, I, think, I think there's a lot of, of upside to that because, as you said, Joe, you know, this is the start. This is the bridge between physical and virtual. So... I don't. Um, I think, and I hope that everyone that's on this call has already downloaded or, or will download this this white paper that we um, have built uh, as a team here together. And within that white paper, we have what we call a flywheel uh, for computer vision, which outlines a lot of the um, specific outcomes. So everything from operational efficiency to sustainability, for example, and, and there there are many others like public safety, you know, customer experience, um, uh, revenue enhancement. Sorry, I keep, I keep thinking of a, yeah. I, I'm an IT guy, and so revenue revenue is the last thing I tend to think about, but uh, it is crucial nonetheless. So um, can I ask, ask Wayne, could you walk us through your view of that flywheel and help the, the audience perhaps understands how computer vision uh, itself can drive so many disparate outcomes within the enterprise. Yeah, I think that a couple of things. So one is, you know, as technologists, we tend to talk about the art of the possible, right? And we spent a number of years as, as AI was being launched, as machine learning was maturing, as, you know, neural networks and things like that were exploding talking with customers about the art of the possible. And to be honest, it really didn't resonate into, you know, into implementation. So what we did is, you know, our team, we have literally thousands of customer meetings a year. So we went back into those notes and we started looking. And one of the things that we saw was regardless of vertical industry, five universal themes emerged, right? And those themes were, as as you mentioned, they were personnel and facility safety. So how do I protect my facility? How do I protect the people in it? You know, for example, you know, uh, you know, making sure that that somebody working in a particular environment has the right protective gear on, that they're they're not in an area they're not trained to be, right? That there's not they're not near some dangerous equipment, right? And then the second theme that emerged was kind of what if, as a customer or an employee or a vendor, what's my experience from the time I engage or I enter that facility till the time I leave? So, you know, taking that 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 worker example, right? That's that's part of my experience as an employee there, right? The fact that the company is is doing things to make my work experience and and process safer. The third category was around operational efficiency. So customers challenged us with, you know, this technology is great, but if you can't help me run my business better and show me how to do that, then, you know, I'm not that interested. And we can do that. If you think about, you know, think about an an airport, for example, if I could, if I could identify are the right people, are the right pieces of equipment there when the plane arrives, right? Now going back to that personal experience, I'm impacting my experience as a passenger, right? Because I'm getting off the plane faster, right? I'm impacting my experience as a passenger because the plane that I'm boarding is going to be ready sooner, right? So I'm not spending as much time sitting around the airport. And then, you know, for the, you know, from an operational perspective, if I could get one more flight a day out of that gate, right? That's huge for the airport. And from a sustainability perspective, if I'm reducing the idle time of that aircraft at the gate, I've got an impact on my environment, right? So now I've impacted the fourth category, which is sustainability. How do I make better use of, you know, water, power? How do I reduce my carbon footprint, right? Then you tie all those things together and they they enhance revenue. Like I talked about, you know, using sticking with the airport example. If I got one more flight a day per gate out of an airport, that is literally hundreds of thousands of dollars a day, right? That I can impact. If I can get somebody into my facility faster, like a, a fan in a stadium, 
that's more per event revenue because instead of waiting online to go through security, right, and have that experience, they're in there spending money. So it's about personnel and facility safety, customer employee vendor experience, operational efficiency, sustainability, and revenue enhancement. Those are the five universal themes that we've uncovered. What I find really interesting about that is is how they all uh, are, are in some ways, different perspectives of the same outcome. Yeah, they <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you know, Joe, in your, in your experience, um, you know, I, I can imagine that, uh, especially when you're talking about s- scale of smart cities, that um, it can be very difficult to, to sort of arrive at a use case that, that feeds into uh, multiples of those instead of, well, this is all about sustainability or this is all about personal safety. Let's put the let's put the cameras up just to keep people safe. Do you do you feel that you know that companies need to take this take a, a more broad view as Wayne was just describing to us? Absolutely, yeah. There 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 is um, not only are cameras the number one thing to gather that data. There are there are other sensors, right? Multi-mole sensors that come in, you know. But when you think about it, let's just take a really quick example. Let's take um, a, a smart venue in a city, and you have. Uh, intersections around that smart venue. And you may want to determine whether or not an accident occurs when people are coming to or exiting an event so you can get EMS there immediately. But at the same time, you want to know what that traffic flow is so that a completely disparate part of the city or organization can then go in and do planning for future venues in that area. And they can gather that same data from the computer vision enabled cameras that are at that intersection that was alerting to EMS emergency. And they can use that data and do um, urban and rural planning as necessary um, for future intersections and traffic flow. And that's a completely different part of the city. It's a completely different focus area, but it's the same data that it was acquired the same way. And it has massive impact in the future of our cities with our taxpayers and our governments and how they use that money and how they determine what exactly they need to do uh, for the future of that particular space if they're going to build a similar venue uh, or a bigger venue. And so that's an example of how the same technology can be used in a different t- uh, different space and different time, um, uh, but that data still comes through a computer vision enabled uh, camera system. Yeah, as as we've seen with all AI, data is and will always be the great differentiator and the the true value proposition. Um, and in that, you know, the the scenario you just described makes me think, okay. Well, you know, clearly you need to have everybody on the same page that, that's building this. But we all know, you know, that for any project of any scale, that it, there there are a lot of different uh, diverse team members involved in both ownership of and implementation responsibilities, all the way through to, to managing and monitoring these solutions. Um, you know, in your experience, guys, and, and Wayne, let me let me start with you, if you don't mind. Um, mm-hmm. What's what are the biggest challenges for these diverse teams uh, in in realizing some of the benefits that Joe was just talking about? I think that there's, you know, th- there's three key constituents in the process, right? The, in 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 our experience, so the first one, right, is the line of business manager. So. Their challenge is they're looking for these insights that we've talked about, these out, these five outcomes. They're looking for them in real time because yeah. they're seeing that as their competitive advantage, right? And that's, that's something they've never had to deal with before, right? Before they used to look at past trends, they'd make business and strategy decisions, but business is moving too fast now. They can't do that. They need these insights in, in real time. The second thing is there's a new group of people at companies, whether they're, whether they're contracted out as a service or whether they're employees, right? And that's data science and data management people. And their challenge is they've got to develop these models and these algorithms, right? They've got to develop these applications and dashboards that are presenting this information back to these lines of business managers that are that are trying to run the business. Now, the challenge that they have is their background is data science, right? They don't necessarily know the business, right? They 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 don't necessarily understand 
you know, the production line at a, you know, at a, at a car manufacturer or an airport operation, right? So they, they've got that issue. And then the third constituents are the poor guys and, and gals that are caught in the middle, right? Which is the IT department. So what they're dealing with now is data types and infrastructure that they've got to integrate in that they've never seen before. Because traditionally, in the past, these types of workloads and workflows were very isolated, right? They were they were relegated to the device they controlled. They were relegated to a very specific um, department. You know, as Joe mentioned, you know, in the opening, this is about where the physical world meets the digital world. And for the IT people, they were never there, right? So I've got you know, data types, interfaces, information coming from, from all these different places. But again, the, the power of this data, and as we talked about with, with those, those outcomes, is they are all intertwined. So that, that ability to ingest once and extract these multiple outcomes from this data is really critical, right? So... And that's something, that's something we're seeing too, Brad, just to jump back on what Wayne said at the very end. It doesn't matter what market you're in, whether it's uh, a smart city, uh, retail, agricultural, uh, industrial. Uh, a lot of the data that's coming in is ubiquitous in terms of its use, and it's really the line of business managers from what we've seen that need to understand the value proposition. And, and what's interesting is uh, a, a challenge for folks is to realize that if you're a line of business manager and you're, you're focused on factory safety, you've got a line of business manager sitting right next to you who's focused on predictive maintenance uh, for uh, failures of those factory machines. And you can yeah. use the same data. You two are on the same team and you probably have no idea of exactly <laughs> what tools and applications can be put on the same box uh, or same system to deliver e equivalent uh, value creation information for both of your divisions. And that's that's really a big challenge that we see at Intel okay. is making sure that multiple personas, multiple line of business managers or decision makers in a city within separate, uh, same, same city, same company, but different divisions are actually all aligned on this technology once they understand the information. Yeah, it, it's the snowflake problem. You know, it is so easy for a lot of business to stand up their own data silo. Um, and, you know, and rightfully so, because business has, over the last 10 years, gained a lot of power and buying power in the enterprise. Uh, so that, that just makes it, to me, you know, I, I'm maybe anticipating, which is, by the way, our, our last question, because we, we, this, is, this is a rapid fire um, <laughs> conversation. Uh, so this is my last question for you guys. But uh, does that mean then, you know, that me, if I'm wanting to get started as, as the, you know, IT, the, the, C, the chief digital officer, the chief technical officer, you know, if I'm the executive group inside of company, how should I start? Should I just go to the bit lines of business and say, well, what do you guys think? Should we all get together? Or should I you know, find a partner and go through our list of solutions, prioritize, and then architect for those, et cetera? So, um, okay. Wayne, I'm coming back to you, man. Will you, will you yeah. walk us through what you think are, are the next steps for folks? Yeah, and in, in our experience, the thing we're seeing is, is one, it's important for them to understand the technology today allows you to create a platform to ingest once and yet get these multiple insights, right? So, so take that off the table, right? And that helps things out tremendously because then it's really about focusing on one of those five outcomes, right? Pick a prioritized outcome, start with that first and show where this infrastructure facilitates that because then it's really easy to add workloads and workflows to that that process and scale up and scale out so that's really what we re end up recommending joe what do you think could, i was going to say could not agree more i think of it as a flower growing out of a pot of dirt we've got this beautiful soil we're ready to go be that first flower, find that one problem that you're going to solve and be a solution for, and everyone else will look to it and they will replicate. <laughs> yep. And I, I think of solutions like this as a bonsai tree that uh, is, is beautiful to behold, but requires some very delicate maintenance over time. 
Um, well, with that, gentlemen, thank you so much for, for all of your insights today and everyone who tuned in. Thank you for joining us for this fast chat. I, I enjoyed it and I hope you did as well. Um, take care, everyone. Excellent. Thanks for having us.